Hey yo, Jiggly Gut here with some more Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templars, the director's cut. In the last episode, we went to Spain and did a few puzzles, found an old chalice, which we took to a priest who is now polishing her so damn much he's going to rub the inscription clean off the damn thing, and I am stumped in the bloody sewer. But, with any luck, hopefully... I will figure out what the hell I am missing. So let's just jump right into it. My medieval French isn't much, but the few words I understood seem to say, this is where the gallows used to stand. Maybe. There were three arches, each with an inscription. There were three arches, the inscription was hard to read, but I made out Templier and something about innocence. Can we smash him with that? Nothing hollow there. Oh, okay. What about here? It was time for some brutal destruction. Hey, that's hollow! I'd poked a hole in an historical site. If any archaeologists came by, they'd lynch me for this. There was some sort of mechanism hidden inside the wall, with a lever in the middle of it. Well, fantastic. Here goes. The secret door had jammed. I couldn't get through that gap. Inside the hole, I could see one of the cogs had come loose and jammed the mechanism solid. Okay, poke it with the sewer tool again. No. Pick up the chain. Finally! Okay, that worked. Okay. The door mechanism was trashed. It would take a blacksmith or an engineer to do anything with that. And then we got these stairs that go all the way down. There was a crack in the wall. Through it. What? There was a crack in the wall. Through it, I could see a glimmer of natural light. In the beginning was the end. An end wrought by our enemies began our darkness. In the end will be a beginning. An end to our enemies heralds our new day. Report. The military establishments are in flux. The end of the Cold War has left them with no clear goal and as obvious targets for budgetary cuts. We have successfully promoted a sense of betrayal in the upper echelons. They feel that the politicians have cast them adrift. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Good. Mademoiselle? Governments are giving the corporations more respect than their own citizens. A groundswell of dissatisfaction and dissidence is growing. The corporations are becoming too large and complex for their own executives to control them. A blind belief in market forces is accelerating this trend the world over. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. The global population's belief in those that govern it has never been lower. We have inculcated a sense of immediacy and action over forethought and planning in all the major governments. They are acting on hasty decisions that cannot be completed or revoked without appearing foolish. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Excellent. Sounds South African. The tired old governments are dying a slow death from their own incompetence and our machinations. 
professor. Where is the broken sword? Ah, as we discussed last time, with the loss of the manuscript, our search is as a corollary hindered. And as discussed last time, you have been furnished with a dramatically increased budget. What have you been doing with our money, Professor? We are working on the principle that the Templars... <clears throat> that is to say, our predecessors... Hold on. These are the Templars? Must have left a trail when they were hiding the clues to the Sword of Baphomet's location. I have a small army of historians and archaeologists ferreting out that trail. I trust these historians and archaeologists are more trustworthy than your friend Pigram. Pigram was loyal. He tried to protect the Lokmarn gem when the Hashashin came near. And failed. And don't call that Syrian maniac the Hashashin. He's an assassin. Plain and simple. That's not what he believes. He actually thinks. Silence! Do I have to remind you that we have a sacred duty? A trust? When Philippe attempted to destroy the Order, we lost the sword and our power with it. Now we have the opportunity to reforge it. But time is short. We need results, not petty bickering, not excuses. Now, Professor Baphomet. Yes, of course, my apologies. We will find Baphomet and the sword, manuscript or no. We have already found another element actually within Paris. Excellent. What is it? Well, we're not exactly sure at present. Ha! Ah, but I have my best people working on it. You would do well not to criticize others, Eklund. At least I have not murdered one of our own. Of course. That guy was the bogus doctor in the hospital. Marquet was a liability. Eklund dealt with him on my orders. I beg your pardon, Grandmaster. I did not mean to. Have you any good news for us, Professor? We already know three of the elements. We know that Klausner had obtained the lens before he vanished. Where was he? Syria. We know that he arrived, but after that, nothing. The assassin. I fear so. It's a shame. Klausner was a good operative. This will be our last meeting in person until we locate the Sword of Baphomet. I hope that I don't need to emphasize the importance of finding it. Without it, our endeavors come to nothing. With the sword reforged, we will have the power to sweep the stage of all opposition. The next time that we meet, it will be to become the princess of this world! Wow! Wow! That's all you got to say? Wow! Oh, talk about coming along at the right time. Let's go down. So we've got the stairway up, we got this altar... The water seemed to belong to an underground river or something. It was way too deep to belong to the catacombs. Mm hmm there we go. In the middle of the circle was a stump of stone, a shaft of daylight from the world above lancing down to touch it. Oh, gee, I wonder what that's used for. The tripod's feet fitted neatly into the notches on the top of the stump. And now we want the gem. The light, falling from above, struck the gem and scattered in five neat rays. And each ray picked out a letter. Starting from the left, I could read... M. 
M-A-R-I-B. Marib. Now all I had to do was figure out what the heck that meant. Nico, I've seen them. Who? The Templars. I spied on their meeting in the catacombs. And you saw the Knights Templar? I saw a bunch of guys masquerading as Templars. They're after something called the Sword of Baphomet. The bogus doctor was there, the guy who killed Marquet. The manuscript is the key, just as we thought. It shows the way to the broken sword, whatever that is. And how does the assassin fit into all this? He's out to stop them. These Neo-Templars, they're men and women in influential positions. Don't you see? Plantar was one of them. The assassin killed him for the manuscript, to stop them finding the sword. But now we have got the manuscript. Yes. So, how do they hope to find the sword? I don't know. They said something about a lens and a guy called Klausner who's gone to Syria. But they didn't seem to realize the significance of the very site of their meeting. You see, after they'd gone, I discovered a stone pedestal and a carved inscription. I set up the gem on the tripod, directly below a beam of light. The gem split the beam and lit the letters M-A-R-I-B. Marib is a village in Syria. You're not thinking of going there yourself, are you? Why not? These guys are crazy and dangerous. That reminds me, you should leave the gem here. Okay, what about the tripod? I'll send it back to Andre, anonymously. Okay. Uh, no. Let's take another look at the manuscript. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. Between them is a gem supported by a tripod. There's a guy working on a loom. A knight with a crystal ball. The knight scroll bears a phrase in Latin. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. There's a guy working on a loom. Okay. Do you think I should go to Marib? Syria is a long way, Georges. Let's see if that priest is finally done with my fucking chalice. Oh, for Pete's sake. The priest was still busy with the chalice, so I decided to have another look around the church. Okay, we'll leave that. Mr. Policeman's back here to stop us from going in the sewer again. You're back. We, oui, I have returned. Hmm, maybe not. Hmm. Well, I wasn't expecting to see you back here again. No? Well, it is a strange thing, but I am here on duty. On duty? But you're just sitting there drinking wine. No, I am not just drinking wine. I am under cover. I must be missing something. You're in uniform. Precisely, monsieur. My cover is that of an indolent, wine-guzzling police officer. You've got me convinced. Merci. But in re reality, my every muscle is poised, every nerve honed. I am drawn tight, ready to pounce. Dang! Who or what were you planning to pizang on? You must have heard, m monsieur, of the terror that is gripping Paris. You mean the killings? Oh, at last, someone's taken action. <laughs> People die every day. No, no, I am on the trail of Sewer Jacques. I, uh... Who? Sewer Jacques, the terror of the sub Indian city. He pops up here. He pops up there. The cops, they seek him everywhere. Is he so harsh or beneath the neck? That damned elusive Sir Jacques. 
Bravo, that's very good. Merci. I was up half the night writing that. <laughs> Who is this Sewer Jacques character anyway? Ah, uh, if we but knew that, we could have him in custody in an hour. But he is cunning. To despoil the sewers of our fair city, he has co committed many deceptions. He has pretended to be a police officer and deluded a poor war veteran. Uh oh. He has pretended <laughs> to be a jongleur. Wow, is that the time? And an American tourist. What nationality are you, monsieur? Canadian. Well, uh, gotta go now. See ya. <laughs> well, it's not everyone who can say they started an urban myth. <laughs> Sewer Jacques. Jeez Louise. Well, I guess it's off to Syria. The cat was an ugly brute who looked like he owned the joint. It was the sort of bell you see in hotel receptions. Uh, kind of unexpected here. There were some great bargains on the shelf, providing you ran a junk museum. The stand was being watched by a young boy, maybe 12 years old. Who the hell? As I didn't see the point of going all the way over there to get scratched, I stayed where I was. Yeah, let's give it a rubber ball to play with. No. Hey there, young fella. Speaky you the English? Speaker you the Anglaise? Uh, Parlez-vous Anglais? Yes, see, si, and indeed we. Oui. And rather better than you by the sound of it. <laughs> my name is Nicho. Welcome to my grand emporium of quality merchandise. Quality tribe. That's not a very friendly cat you got there, Nijo. No, sir. It is a very unfriendly cat. Why do you keep it? Oh, it's not mine. It just rests where it pleases. And today, it pleases to rest there. As Kipling would say, it is a cat that walks by itself. Fiercely independent. And it smells. Is that your father lurking in the back of the stand? He is indeed. A roaring fellow. Ayub's his name. You don't sound like you respect him very much. Don't I? Not only do I respect him, I rather like him. For all his bluster, we get on very well. So, this is your stand? Oh, yes, sir. Though stand does not begin to do it justice. The finest in this bustling metropolis. This is a bustling metropolis? Well, not per se, no. How much are those books there on the shelf? Have you any Syrian pounds? I think I might have a couple of Irish punt. Then they're too expensive for you, sir. You speak very good English. Thank you, sir. I learned from tapes that my uncle procured. Oh, a language course. No, sir. Jeeves and Wooster. Gussie, Fink, Notto, Aunt Agatha, Wotho. <laughs> Does the word Templar mean anything to you? Templar? Ah, Templar. <gasps> Templar! Why, yes, of course! It does? Yes! A splendid series of books by Mr. Leslie Chatteris, featuring the roguish Mr. Simon Templar. Great! That's a real help, Nijo. Anything else? The Saint television program featuring Mr. Roger Moore of the quizzical eyebrow and a stick man with a halo. Bing! The saint? So all Templar means to you is Roger Moore. I only watched it for the stick man with the halo. Bing! He was better animated. 
Yeah, I don't doubt that. Roger, blink and you miss it. More can't fire a gun without blinking. So, I'm correct in saying that the word Templar doesn't mean much to you. Well, there was the Order of Knights who were wiped out in an Inquisition in 1312, I suppose. That's them. What else do you know? Just how much information do you think there is on a Trivial Pursuit card? A what? <laughs> From the medieval edition. We had it on the stand a couple of years ago. Ask me what a futer is. Go on, I know all this stuff. Uh, never mind. Okay, forget about the Templars for a minute. What do you know about knights? Like the Crusaders? They came to the East on an insane and pointless mission. They sacrificed thousands of lives, including their own, for insensate pride. How oh, anyone damn. can find them romantic confounds me. Okay, let me show you the baubles I carry around. Not on a stand, but in my pockets. This plaster was very useful in Ireland. Really? Your fund of traveler's tales never ceases to enthrall me. Have you seen this man before? No, sir. I'm glad to say. Cold eyes. What do you make of this? Hmm. A man-sized double ply tissue stained with Bestheimer's number 12 white pancake grease paint, apparently. I'm guessing you had some on the shelf once. Here, shake hands, Nijo. I'd rather not, sir. Look at this. A lifting key as used by Parisian sewer workers. Kalu Kalei, sir. I must remember this day for posterity. My grandchildren will be fascinated. <laughs> what do you make of this? Well, beyond the obvious, very little. That pattern seems very familiar, though. Do you know the name Merlin? I'm afraid not, old... Old Bean. <laughs> what do you think of this, eh? Oh, sir, what a sp Splendid plaything. One day, when I am rich, I am going to build a world-renowned collection of brightly colored balls. Are you serious? In deadly earnest, people will come from far and wide to see my... Yes? ...collection. The Rockefellers and the Gettys can keep their hordes of so-called fine art. But answer me this. What good is a Picasso, I ask you, if you cannot bounce it off a wall? You may have a point. Seriously, do you really think this thing's so great? Take it away, you tempter. I'll swap it for something off your stand. Um, due to seasonal financial considerations, I'm afraid I cannot. I thought you wanted this thing. I do, sir. This stand doesn't. Which in translation meant, it's not really my stand, and I'll be in big trouble if I swap anything for something that I want myself. Alternatively, is there any service that you require? Not at the moment, but I'll bear it in mind. So long, Nijo. Toodle peep, sir. So... Embarrassed as I am to admit it, you can spot an American tourist a mile off. <laughs> It was a guess, but I figured the woman to be an American tourist. Just call me Sherlock. Okay, well, let's go and talk to this idiot. Hi, uh, I was wondering whether you could help me. Why, sure, son. Always got time for a fellow American. The name's Henderson. Dwayne Henderson. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Henderson. Hell, boy, I'm not in the office. Call me Dwayne. Oh, okay, Dwayne. My name's George Stobart. Shake hands, Dwayne. Why? I'm just being friendly. Let's just be friendly by keeping our hands to ourselves. Yeah? Yeah. What do you think of this grease paint stained tissue? You've been hanging around with actors? Have you seen this man before? Maybe. Where'd you get it? I just picked it up somewhere. Sure. 
I'm always picking up photos of complete strangers and then asking around. Ow! Damn it! There. I've got another picture of a complete stranger. Maybe I'll ask around about this one. Look, I've got some plaster of Paris. Yeah, and I've got a picture of me shaking hands with George Bush. Of course, that was back in 76. What do you make of this? A manhole lifting key. So? Hey, how come you recognize it? Hey, how come you're carrying it? Yeah, well, let's just drop the subject, shall we? Does this matchbook mean anything to you? Nothing. Nothing at all. Do you know the name Merlin? Nope. What do you think of this? It's a ball. Big deal. I saw a medieval picture of a woman, royalty or nobility, something like that. She was looking in a mirror, but the reflection was of a man with three faces. What do you think of that? I think you should be in therapy. Do you think bulls have any significance around here? Weird question, George. Nope, I don't think they have. Do you mind if I ask you an odd question? Okay, but I might not answer it. Do you know anything about the Templars? The Knights Templar? Yep. Nope. Nothing at all. Well, you knew they were an order of knights. What I know and what I say are two different things, boy. I haven't lasted as long as I have in this business without knowing that. In this business? Sure. The greetings card business. Oh, please. Does the image of a knight holding a crystal ball mean anything to you? Hell no. What would a knight want with a hunk of glass? I don't know. That's the prob... What's wrong, boy? It's not a crystal ball. It all came together in my head. What the conspirators had mentioned losing. The strange perspective of the manuscript. It's a lens! Have you talked to Nijo? Nijo? He's the youngster on that junk stand, right? Yeah, we've met him. He's a smart kid. Speaks four languages, and he's never had a day's formal education. He should go far. Kept trying to peddle garbage on us, though. You're not going to find much worthwhile around here. I know that, and you know that. But try telling Pearl. She reckons there's antiquities in them door stands. <laughs> You're a long way from home, Dwayne. Could say the same about you, George. Me? Well, I'm just sightseeing, that's all. Without a camera? Kinda lacks to come all this way and not take pictures. Mind if I take a picture of you, George? What? Uh, why? Another one? Ow! Really? You could have warned me. You don't mind, do you, George? The folks back home will be real interested. What exactly do you do, Dwayne? Didn't I say? Oh, I run a greeting card company. Yep, we're based in Cleveland, Ohio. Pearl writes the poems for him. You ought to ask her to recite some. Where is your wife, Dwayne? Pearl? Oh, she's around, looking for bargains. How long have you been married, Dwayne? Hell, must be uh, 30 years now. <laughs> well, I'll leave you be, Dwayne. Okay, well, I'll see you around, Dwayne. Count on it, George. The stand was hawking ancient machine parts. How did this guy make a living selling useless old machine parts in the middle of nowhere? No, let's talk to Pearl. Hello. I was wondering whether you could help me. Why, hi there, handsome. What can I do for you? Hi, my name's George. I was just... Well, it's certainly a delightful to meet you, George. I was... My name's Mrs. Henderson, but you can call me Pearl, I'm sure. Okay, Pearl. I was... So nice to meet a friendly American face so far from home. Pearl? Yes, dear? I was just wondering if you could help me. Why, sure, precious. Oh, jeez. Let's start off with the basics. I've got some plaster of Paris. That's nice, dear. Don't want to buy it? What about a picture of Khan? Have you seen this man before? No. A friend of yours? No, not really. 
What do you make of this grease paint stained tissue? Oh, it's grease paint. I thought somebody had gaudy taste in makeup. I liked her too much to zap her with the buzzer. Really? Do you know what this is? Lord, no. It looks painful, though. It's a sewer key. Who'd want to break into a sewer? Does this matchbook mean anything to you? You're a philomenist? Don't they have secret handshakes? Oh, George, now you're teasing. Have you ever heard of anybody calling himself Merlin? Merlin? No, Merlin. Merlin. There's an O in there. Moolin? You haven't, have you? No, darling. No Moolins. What does this mean to you? Gosh, is this some sort of psychological test? No. Oh, well in that case it's a red ball. Okay, let's get on to the more important stuff. Have you ever heard of a group of monks <coughs> called the Templars? Sounds familiar. I remember. Dwayne had a book. The Holy Something and the Holy Something Else I can't quite recall. I read a little of it. And? Seemed like a lot of hooey to me. I've been talking to your husband, Dwayne. Oh. Yeah, he tells me that he runs a greeting card company and you write the poems that go in them. Oh, yes, indeed. I consider myself the artiste of the family. Tell me, George, would you like to hear one of my poems? Not really, but go ahead. Yes, go on then. Okay then, darling, here we go. Our sympathy upon this time, when your heart doth break. I like the doth. Classy, isn't it? We know the grief that must entail when your schnauzer gets bitten by a snake. Ah, it still touches me. What do you think, George? It's very specific, isn't it? You think so? We sell a lot of those, dear. So, tell me a little about yourself, Pearl. Me? Oh, a gentleman's interest is always so flattering. Well... My husband and I run a greetings card company in a cute little place called Akron in Ohio. Akron? Cute? Little? You said that your company is based in Akron. And Dwayne said it's in Cleveland, no doubt. Well, yes he did. Dwayne was in the Marines and Vietnam, you know. Anyway, he got a medical discharge. Thing is, he gets confused. We moved away from Cleveland five years ago. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean... He also gets a little paranoid. Thinks he's a spy or something. I'm so sorry, Pearl. Don't worry yourself, George. We live with it. Have you talked to the boy on the bric-a-brac stand? Oh, you've met him? His name's Nijo, you know. Oh, he's just so cute, I could die. I'd love to bundle him up and take him back to Ohio. He might not thank you. I'm looking for something ancient, you know. Something to impress the folks back home. The poor boy was trying to do his best, but we still haven't found anything. Do you know anything about medieval weaving? I do a little needlework, but gosh. It's okay. It was a long shot. I've got to go now, Pearl. It's been a pleasure, George. Don't be a stranger. Okay, okay. The merchant was selling fruit. I decided I might have some later. Let's talk to Dwayne again. Hi there, Dwayne. Hi there, George. How can I help you, young fella? You can't. Okay, well, I'll see you around, Dwayne. Count on it, George. So that's another way out, and then we've got this funky-looking kebab stand here, and a door. The stall holder's face wasn't a great ad for running a kebab stand. In the still air, the smell hung around like bad smells do. The stand had kebabs dangling from the canopy. As a marketing device, it lacked something. Hi, what's your name, sir? Hello, hello, you buy kebab. Musku. I don't want kebab. Here, have Red Bull. What do you make of this, sir? You buy kebab. You buy kebab. Yum, most good. Oh, come on, they smell like ass. What about this? What do you make of this, sir? You buy kebab. You buy kebab. 
Yum, most good. I'd value your opinion on this, sir. Nah, you buy kebab. Nam? Um, not nam. It looks like they've been cooked in the toilet. Okay, do you know this guy? What do you think of this? Buy kebab? Come to the... Can't you read? Um, sewer key? Does this mean anything to you? No, no, you buy kebab. I don't want kebab. What about this? I'd value your opinion on this, sir. Nah, you buy kebab. None? Clearly I'm speaking with the village idiot wearing the Union Jack. I'd value your opinion on this, sir. Nah, you buy kebab. None? At least it looks like it. What do you make of this, sir? You buy kebab. You buy kebab. Yum, most good. Yeah, fuck this. Well, goodbye. Have a nice day. Most good. Oh, a shifty guy selling carpets. Brilliant. The carpet seller looked craftier than the offspring of a fox and an insurance agent. It was the pattern. I'd seen that pattern somewhere recently. The carpet seller had an impressive collection of wares. If I had the time and the money, I might have bought a couple of rugs. Muruba! Hello, sir! It looks like the pattern on our matchbook. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? Ah! Give to me! Give to me! Allah mut! Many beneficent greetings, my most fortunate possible friend. Huh? Do I know you, mister? No. No. And again I say, no. But, my friend, do you not see our mutual good fortune in this meeting? How frank do you want me to be? You are a traveler, yes? Boy, you must be the world's greatest detective. No. I am told that is Sherlock Holmes of the big forehead and slipper full of shag. I, as contrast, am world's greatest luxury taxi driver. I can see where this is going. I am Ultar, taxi driver and luxury guide per excellent. Yes. This I had to hear. Where does your heart desire to go? Simply mention the name to your obedient servant and we shall fly there, swift as the eagle. Oh, well... I don't really want to leave Marib yet, but I'm sure that if I do, you'll be the first to know. He's good. You know where you want to go, you come to Ultar. Thanks. See you around, Ultar. Be having a pleasant day, full of shining experiences and happiness, my friend. <laughs> I don't know why, but I felt like I could trust this guy. The club manager's bonhomie seemed forced. Looking at the place, I could understand that. Hi. Nice club you've got here. I was wondering if you could help me. What? I mean, I beg your pardon? I'm sorry, but I don't understand. No surprise there, all righty. He says sorry, but he not speak English. Uh, but he didn't say anything. He not have tongue. No tongue? What happened? It was bet. Uh, and he lost. He won. You should see other chappy. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Well. The outside of the ornate spittoon was beautiful. The inside wasn't. I hadn't felt a need to spit since I was 12. The spittoon was nearly full. What did they sell here? Drinks or expectorants? <laughs> Even if I'd wanted to spit, my mouth was too dry. Damn, the door's locked. Uh, I'm sorry? Did, did you say something? He say you not to go in toilet. Read sign, matey. Matey? It lose something in translation. 
By staring hard at the notice and squinting, I discovered I couldn't understand a word of it. <laughs> okay, we'll see you later, Alibaba. Instead, go down the street. I figured going out into the countryside was a pretty good way to get lost. Okay, we want the other street then. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Okay, let's go and fuck around with this cat again. And now it's up there, let's try tossing the ball at it. As I didn't see the point of going all the way... Oh, how about we try that? Send the cat up there, ring the bell. No. Hi, Nijo. Hello again, sir. And how may I help you this time? Who's the guy selling the kebabs? Oh, that's Arto. A miserable blighter, to be sure, sir. He doesn't seem very happy. He never is. Day in, day out, a face like a wet Wednesday. Whatever one of those is. Does he speak any English? Not cogently, no. Face like a wet Wednesday. Wow. What do you know about that couple? Oh, they're American. Is that all? The chap's a little odd. As for the lady, it's a funny thing. But I get the impression she's a lot cleverer than she's letting on. Hmm. I met an interesting guy earlier, a cab driver. Ah, that would have to be Uttar, a barbaric sort of chap. Oh, he's not that bad. You know how he speaks in Pidgin English? That's how he speaks in Arabic, too. That's not a very friendly cat you got there, Nijo. No, sir. It is a very unfriendly cat. Why do you keep it? Oh, it's not mine. It just as keep fiercely in the and it rests where it pleases. Seriously, do you really think this thing's take? So long, Nijo. Toodle peep, sir. I hadn't come all this way to seek out curios. As I didn't see. Okay, maybe I gotta wait for the dude to come along and then pat the cat. Okay, back to the kebab stand. Close up, I could see flies love kebabs. Hello again, sir. Hello, kebab? Mmm, yes? Yeah. Well, no. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Hey, what about Dwayne? Hi there, Dwayne. Hi there, George. How can I help you, young fella? Have you met Ultar? Almost luxurious air-conditioned taxi ride, mister. Yeah, the cabbie. Tried to pull a bunco on us. Take us on a wild goose chase off into nowhere. Okay, well, I'll see you around, Dwayne. Count on.
Okay, what's Pearl got to say about Utah? Hello again, Pearl. Why, hello, George. It's such a pleasure to see you again. Have you met the taxi man, Ultar? Havens, yes. What a big man. Very muscular. But you didn't go for a ride. Why, George, you're absolutely the most... Oh, you mean a taxi ride? No, Dwayne wasn't interested, so it didn't happen. I've got to go now, Pearl. It's been a pleasure, George. Don't be a stranger. No, oh, damn. I am a stranger in a strange land. A lot of unusual sights, sounds, and smells of bad kebabs. Hello, sir. Lovely carpet. Does this mean anything to you? Yes, yes, carpet, yes? No, no. What do you think of this? Hello, sir. Lovely carpet. Does this mean anything to you? Yes, yes. Carpet. Mama Salama. Okay. It must have taken him all morning just to set up his stall. I'm going upstairs. Hello again, Ultar. Praise be to Allah. I am blessed with your bountiful presence once more. What do you think of this ball? He is most splendid, mister. Uh, no. This is a key for lifting manhole covers. You carry some strange stuff with you, mister. Shake my hand, Ultar. Ha <laughs> ha. Remind me of thing that happened month ago. Maybe six. Man come up to Ultar, say, Shake hands, Ultar. But man have electric buzz thing in his hand. Ha ha! How we laughed! Then I broke his arms. I didn't think electrocuting the big Syrian was a good idea. <laughs> what does this grease paint stained tissue mean to you? Nothing. Why? What does grease paint stained tissue mean to you? What do you think of this plaster? Not much there. Not enough to make tasteful garden gnome, for example. How about a really small garden gnome? Ultar not think so. <laughs> Have you seen this man before? Oh, most certainly. Was here only yesterday. Here? Yesterday? My God, he's close. Yes, he was asking lot of questions, just like you. What did he ask about? He asked about American called Stoby. Stobart? Yes, Stobart. You know him. The killer knew my name. What else did he ask about? He asked about German man called Klobner. I tried to remember the name of the man the conspiracy had lost Klausner. in Syria. Was his name Klausner? Sure, that is what Altar said. Klausner. I told this man in the picture, Klausner wanted to go up to Bull's Head. Hold on. He wanted to go where? Bull's Head. Big hill. Ten mile out of town. Maybe sixty. When was that? Oh, maybe a week ago. Mm -hmm. This place is certainly hard to find. Oh, yes. It is most exclusive. The membership can be no more than... Hmm. Kind sir, what would you guess the population of the village to be? Gee, I don't know. A couple of thousand? Then I would estimate the membership to be no more than a couple of thousand. What do you make of that boy in the market, Nejo? Nejo? Ha! Ayub's boy is too big for sandals. I speak splendid English and he laugh. He say, Ultar, you big ox, you split infinitive. I say, I split your head if you stay still long enough. Ha 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 ha! Pretty funny, yes? Hilarious! You should be on cable. What do you know about the kebab seller? A most miserable man. Ultar say, cheer up, matey mate, it might never happen. And he say, shut up, Ultar. Fancy that. Not at all. Arto has face like the drizzle that falls on the midweek afternoon. Whatever that is. <laughs> Have you met the American couple? 
Have Ultar met them? Have Ultar met them? Yes, Ultar have met them. And? They most ungenerous. Ultar offer to show them wonders <coughs> of countryside. They say, is there anything ancient? Ultar say, yes, of course. Nature is ancient. They say, no, anything ancient made by men. And Ultar say, have you seen taxi? Fan belt older than Ozymandias. Ha 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 ha! But they gone. Could you tell me what that sign means? It's a door stay shut until brush come back. Signed, the management. Oh, well, what does that mean? Manager buy lovely new toilet brush, leaves it by wash basin for ten minutes, come back, it been stealen. Stolen. Not even out of wrapper. He damn cross. Lock up toilet and say, nobody use fine pristine toilet until brush given back. We say, what we do till then, eh? He say, Cross legs and use superior willpower. And that's what you've been doing? No. Ultar use bucket. <laughs> Do you know anything about the Templars? Of course. Yes? What can you tell me? Great Shebop band of the 60s. Uh, no, n that's not really... Who put the bop in the bop, 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 bop? Yeah, eternal questions. <laughs> See you around, Ultar. May good fortune follow you, mister. We'll ask him about Bull's Head the next time, but for now, I think we will leave it here. This has been Jiggly Gut with Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templates, the Director's Cut. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace out.